The title of this video is No Lie. I promise that this video about fluorescent lights is interesting. Well, at least I think that it's interesting. I am a teacher and I was recently using a document camera to work through something with my students. The camera was hooked up to the TV and one of my students noticed that there was a bit of a flicker of light, a wave or a pulse. It didn't get dark, but it wasn't consistent. When I turned the overhead lights off, the pulsing also stopped. So the fluorescent lights must have caused the pulsing. Then I did this little demonstration, which if you have a camera that has a frame rate capture of more than 120 frames per second, you can do this as well. Most iPhones have a slow motion feature which captures at 240 frames per second. And when you watch it back in slow motion, you can see the light pulsing. I was thrilled that one of my students got curious and ask the question because I have been waiting for an excuse to talk about why I think fluorescent lights are really cool and why our eyes and brains are cool and why electricity is cool and I thought I'd share it all with you as well. First of all, what is a fluorescent light? The way they work is really cool. A fluorescent light is a tube full of gas, usually an inert gas or a gas that doesn't react easily, such as argon. And there's also a tiny bit of mercury, which is why if you break a fluorescent tube, you should get out of the room because mercury is bad for you. There are electrodes at each end of the tube through which a current of electricity can travel. I am oversimplifying here because the physics of electricity is fascinating, but too complex for the scope of this video. In saying that, when there is an electrical current, electrons are moving. When the electrical current moves through a globe, the electrons travel through the gas in the globe. As electrons travel, they increase the energy within the gas, which causes some of the mercury to heat up and become a gas as well. The electrons bounce around and collide with the mercury molecules, and this excites them, increasing the energy in the electrons. When the electrons calm back down, they emit photons, which travel in a wave and is light. But most of the time, the light emitted by an electron after it has collided with mercury is ultraviolet. It's a wavelength that's moving too quickly for us. It's invisible light. Our eyes just can't register ultraviolet light. But fluorescent lights in your homes and offices, they produce visible light. This is because the glass tube itself is coated with a phosphor powder coating. When a wave of ultraviolet lights hits a phosphor atom, it causes one of the atom's electrons to get excited. And when it slows down, it produces photons with a slower wavelength, which is visible to us. Usually these produce white light, but folks who make fluorescent lights can alter the color by altering the kind of phosphors used, sometimes getting a warmer light instead. So electrons pass, through a fluorescent tube, causing lots of little collisions with mercury molecules. The electrons get excited, but when they slow down, emit photons, which produce ultraviolet light. And when those photons hit the phosphor coating in the tube, the electrons in the phosphor get excited, and when they calm down, emit photons that produce visible light. And that's how many homes and offices are lit. But why do they pulse? To answer that, we need to talk a little bit about how electricity works. And again, I'm simplifying, but there are a couple of different ways that electricity can travel. An electrical current is the flow of charged particles. Electrons. Electrons get bumped through a conductor at close to the speed of light. If you can imagine what happens when you turn a light switch in your home, you're probably imagining a current like a river or a tap. And you wouldn't be blamed for that, but that's actually not how electrical currents in your home travel. Electricity does sometimes travel in a constant stream, which we would call a direct current or DC. It doesn't get greater or smaller. It doesn't change direction and is actually how batteries work. But the electricity in your home is not a direct current, but an alternating current or AC, which does travel in a constant stream that travels in waves. It changes direction. It has peaks and troughs, when it is further away from the center line, it has a greater voltage and current or more energy moving at once to simplify. And when it is in the middle, it has zero voltage or current, but 
only briefly. It differs depend on which country you're in, but most countries use either 50 hertz or 60 hertz. A hertz is the unit we use for a wavelength. One hertz is one cycle per second, so 50 hertz means that a wave cycles or goes down and then back up again 50 times a second. This means that the current going through the light isn't constant. If there are less electrons moving, the light dims because less electrons are releasing photons. And when there are more, it is brighter. Humans can't really see things faster than 60 hertz, but electrical currents either travel at 50 or 60 hertz. Shouldn't we be able to see the flicker all the time? Well, because it's a wave that goes down, then up and down again, and it dims in the middle, it's actually flickering or pulsing at a rate double that. So either 100 hertz or 120 hertz, which is too fast for our eyes to see. So we just perceive it as being on. But it means we can see it through a slow motion camera or a camera shooting at 60 frames per second where the flashes line up with the camera capturing a frame. Fluorescent lights can dim down to 35% of the original brightness. Not off, but certainly enough to pulse. Some devices don't appreciate this alternating current, so it will have adapters to turn the alternating current into direct current. This is why we have AC adapters. So an electric current passes through a fluorescent tube, causing it to light up. But because the current gets stronger and weaker, the light also gets stronger and weaker, causing it to pulse, but at a speed far too fast for our brains to notice. But not too fast for a slow motion camera or sometimes regular cameras when the pulse lines up with the capture rate. And I think that's where we'll leave it for today. I think taking note of strange things around us, like a flashing light when viewed through a camera, can lead to jumping down rabbit holes and this can give us a greater appreciation of the world around us and how things work. At least in the case of my curious student, I've overheard them excitedly explaining that the light through the document camera is pulsing because of the alternating current. And that curiosity and love of learning is something that I think is pretty cool. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my other ones. Feel free to subscribe to see more videos that capture my sense of curiosity and wonder. And let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. Thanks for watching, take care, stay curious, and I will see you next time.